My name is Lilia Singer. I was born in Odessa, which is currently Ukraine. Of course, when I was born there, it was part of the Soviet Union. I don't have that much information about my family past. And, you know, now I'm in my 50s and I'm looking back at my life, I'm saying, well, there's probably a lot of information that my daughter would like to know, that my grandchildren would like to know at some point. I'd love to sit down with my great-grandmother, for instance, and just ask her questions. Playing football and uh, running around the streets and uh, stealing things and stuff like that. And that was what it was to grow up in Brooklyn. I was never good at school, so my mother used to help me. She was wonderful with that. Uh, she'd take me in and she'd, I remember I was bad at math. She'd put number, numbers up on the wall and I'd, I'd add or subtract or multiply with that, you know. And that's, that's how I got through school. When you're 86 years old, you have a lot of memories. And I thought about it a lot. And my earliest memory is my childhood in New York City. Just having a lot of fun and going to school and recreation meant trips to Coney Island. My father was very athletic and he wanted me and my sister to swim. So that was a very early memory of him holding a stopwatch at a swimming pool. Well, I began taking flying lessons back in 1983 and it was right after we bought the house in Nantucket. And it made infinite sense that this was the only way anyone could ever expect to get back and forth to Nantucket and use the house with any regularity. My mom used to tell me all about various relatives that she knew when she was growing up. Um, and I had hardly met any of them. I really didn't pay attention. I wish I did. I wish I wrote it down. My mother liked to sing and uh... When she was uh, very young, she told me she used to be a Floridora girl, if you know what that means. My father uh, was a businessman. He had a business of sorts. Sometimes when I was growing up as a kid, I used to go around with him and watch him. And uh, I'll never forget once, <laughs> we, uh, we went into a, uh, a garage, uh, a garage where they fixed cars. And these guys were in there and they said, come on over, Salome, and we went over and talked to them. And they, I gave my dad some money and uh, my dad marked it down on a card and as we were doing this some guys came running out of the back of the place there. and they came running through and they said hi Soloway and they'd run away like this and went outside and I said to my dad what is this who are those guys and he says come with me he showed, took me outside and he showed me next door was a little uh, storefront and he said uh, that's a place they call Murder Incorporated I've flown now well over 3,000 hours, and my flying habits have been more, we want to get from destination A to B, except you do have to stay in practice, so now and then you have to go fly for that, quote, $100 hamburger, and so I often would fly up to Nantucket just to go for a food for here and there, um, or another favorite treat, and then fly back. So that's been another fun aspect of flying, but it's been more the freedom of being able to quickly get from one place to another. When a, a British child came to live with us in order to escape the Second World War bombings in England, the first night she was with us, our fire siren in Fanwood went off every night at six o'clock sharp as a test. And that fire siren went off. She dove under our dining room table. Not, not crawled, but she just gone underneath the dining room table. And that made such an impression on me because in explaining, you know, why she did that and what had happened at home and the bombs dropping and, and all, it was, uh, it was very vivid to me what it must be like to, to be as a child in a bombed area and have to live through that. I was working at the district attorney's office as a secretary when I got a call from a colonel whom I had met in Washington and he said, when I knew you, you said you wanted to go to law school, would you like to go to Japan for six months? 
they're going to have this trial of these Japanese war criminals, and it would be good experience. I said, that sounds good. So I applied, and I was accepted, and I ended up going to Japan. And I worked there for two and a half years at the trial of the major war criminals, which was very similar to the Nuremberg trial, only this was Japan. His father died when he was a little boy, and then the rest of his family perished when the Germans occupied Odessa. So I have no information about them. I barely know some of the names, and of course there was no photos left. I mean, every, their apartment was ransacked, so there's nothing left, which was very difficult for my dad ever to talk about that, and he never spoke about his family. I had a dog called Whitey, which in Brooklyn, we, didn't, we had to take him out to walk. But Whitey was used to us putting him down. We lived in the upstairs, and we put him down in a bucket downstairs, he got out of the bucket, and he ran around and went out for the night. He used to, in the morning, you'd see him sitting in front of the door. And he was wonderful with that. But when I came home from Japan, I noticed that Everybody wanted things. There was a consumer explosion. People had freezers. I never heard of a freezer. So I was drafted. And uh, they had drafted me into the Marines, actually. But uh, I really didn't want to be in the Marines because they went over the top first. There's a little helicopter school up in Titusville. So I think maybe my next, if I manage to take myself out of the office, is to go up and take a couple of helicopter lessons. I don't really want to get a license, but just to say, hey, I did it. Part of the reason that I'm doing this is to share um, in the future with my children, grandchildren, great-grandchildren, what my life was like and our world was like. and the family was like, so that hopefully questions that they might be asking, I should say you might be asking because it's to you who are out there that I'm talking, things that you might like to know.